Hey there, I'm Jörg Valovirta and welcome to vlog number 14. And this is my first Q&A video ever. All right, first I wanna thank you all. I just got a notification that my videos have reached the mark of 700,000 views, which is awesome. And also my subscribers reached the 7K point. I think it's almost like 7.5K at the moment, which is pretty awesome considering I actually kind of really started this channel like a, basically a year ago. So oh, anyway, Thank you all for the questions and comments. I've tried to answer them all because I, you know, when I go to the YouTube studio thing, I can see the notifications, but sometimes I probably might have missed something. And sometimes, you know, you might have a similar question than somebody else. And then I've only answered to that question and so on. So, well, anyways, I'm, I, I kind of like gathered the most famous questions <laughs> or at least the, the latest ones so mm, let's start first why why cubase instead of logic well cyrus vocalist jake uses cubase he's endorsed by steinberg and uh, well he got me an artist endorsement also so which is Amazing, thank you Steinberg for, for that. But I must say that I'm really glad that I, I switched from Logic. I mean, without the endorsement deal, I would, would have bought Cubase because it's, it's just so the most logical DAW I've ever used. There's so many things that usually, you know, I've, I've been a Mac user for God knows how long. Usually Mac are the most logical, like, I wonder if I could do this, but Cubase just seemed to fit really good for me. And the drum editing soft program is, software, whatever, is fantastic. That's why that. I'm really happy, and now me and Jake, we can work, you know, with the VST connection. We've been actually writing, there's actually one session open, new Zyra songs. We have probably like 30. <laughs> already. So this is one that I will be working today. That was the solo part, a little bit, you know, that style. There's there's all, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, like always. No idea when the next album, when, gonna, when we are gonna record the next album, and when if ever it's gonna come out. But we've been just writing songs, and well, we have quite a lot, so it might be that we are actually going to the studio, or well, drums will be recorded somewhere. I basically most likely do guitars and bass here, but that's like what has been in the last couple of weeks, like my main job, <laughs> so to say. And of course, doing the, the videos. And then, uh, why I switched from Focusrite, Scarlett, to this uh, Steinberg UR816C audio interface? Well, the main reason was that uh, it has a lot more ins and outs. Because with the, with the Scarlett 2 i 2 I needed to, you know, plug in and out the cables. Now, everything what I have is going to here, you know, vocal mic for my poor demo vocals. Uh, well, everything is connected. My reamp box is connected to one of the outs, so it's really practical and it's fantastic. I mean, the Focusrite was great, especially it's so cheap, but this is, I guess, a little bit more expensive. And I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think there is a like fuller sound. Maybe it's, you know, this uses the Yamaha D3 preamps, 
Well, the focus right that, that was great, but it's, that's just really practical. So now I have everything connected all the time, all my amps and load boxes and vocal mics and DI boxes and re boxes and whatnot. That's the reason. And then, why I like Marshalls? That's been asked a lot. Well, if you've seen my videos, you know, they sound awesome. Especially 800, that's my favorite. Maybe it's because, like, my first, my first amp was a small Araya combo. My second amp was a Marshall Valve State. My first real tuba was Marshall 800, 223. You know, I've grown up with that sound, you know, playing wise and, you know, listening to albums and stuff. That's just like coming home to me. And, you know, Marshalls in general, they have this nice. I mean, sometimes they can sound a little bit. I don't know what could be described. Well, whatever, but in the mix, they just work. I mean, this demo I recorded, I first recorded left rhythm guitar with the 5150. I tried with the lead and rhythm channels. I actually prefer the lead on this one and then with the 800. But then I was like, man, I like the guitar right a lot more. It's 800. Why, I'm, I, why, why don't I use that also? So I ended up recording both rhythm guitars with 800 and it's, it's just, you know, the sound. I like, and boosted with super overdrive. I mean, I love 5150. It's 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 a little bit different, but you know, there's time and place for that also. 5150 back in the day was also one of the first tube amps I bought. You know, 90s. Actually, I bought 5150 before this 800 because my first 800 I don't own it anymore. Then I bought 5150. Then a couple of 800s. You know, uh, TSL, my other 800 from 84, the Magical, the Beast, that's been maintenance, it blew off again. So apparently during the years there's been, because it's been maintenance so many times. And the, the guy, the Swiss guy, he's really expert on Marshalls. He said that, uh, well, this isn't muddy, but it kind of is, because there's a lot, a lot of the parts like caps and whatever, I don't remember, were like, you know, thrown in whenever the original parts, you know, fell or whatever. So, and he asked me that, would I want him to restore it in the same condition with the same parts, basically the same parts that when, what it was when it left from the factory from 84. Yes, it's 84. Officially, Marshall didn't start to make these horizontal input one 800s until 85, but mine is 84. There's a stamp, you know, handwritten, who, you know, assembled it, when it was assembled, where, so it's 84. So I guess there was a, I'm pretty sure my horizontal input one. <coughs> Sorry, 800 is one of the first ones then. But maybe it was shipped in 85, but it was made in 84. This is 85. I just love it. You, you know, I, I can get any sound I want from Marshall, especially from 800, with the help of overdrive. Yeah, that answers that. I mean, I've used many other amps on, on, on albums, but I always end up coming back to Marshall and 800. It's like coming home. Uh, what else? Yeah. My signature ESP. I have four of these. This is the one I've used a lot. And this one, this is actually the one that had the Shining logo there. But since I'm not playing in Shining anymore, I put some stickers. And then I have two others. One which is reverse colored, which is white one. That's my like main styro guitar, which I haven't seen in a year. Because it's been in Gothenburg, Cyrus headquarters, because we did our latest tour in the UK like a year ago, then our crew took the my guitars, my, you know, live rig to Gothenburg and then because we were supposed to go out on the road soon after, but, well, a year later, we haven't, for the obvious reasons. And yeah, 
I have I gotten questions that will these be available for public? There's been like every now and then some discussions with the uh, with ESP, but I have no idea. I mean, this is kind of like the you know, I guess you can't make or sell these in England because of Gibson's lawsuits because this has four of these and this is different than for the, you know, USA and make ESPs. This is really thick. The neck is really thick, maple neck. These are handmade in Japan at the original ESP custom shop. So, uh, well, we'll see if that this will ever happen, but if you're interested, you can order one of these. You just have to contact it, contact me first, because we have agreed that if someone wants to order exactly like this, you know, I, I need to give a like okay to that. So they have the specs and stuff at Japan ESP Japan's custom shop, because these are basically. All four are the same, just different color. Obviously, these are handmade. Some of them have a little bit thicker neck than the others. Some has a little bit more low, some a little bit more high, but basically they are the same. So, we'll see. What do I think about Evertune? Well, the feel is a little bit spongy there, but in the studio, it's fantastic. I mean, these guitars, I recorded everything with this. And the last Zyra album, No Halos in Hell, I used producer Jacob Hansen's Evertune ESP. Because, I mean, it's so handy. Because most of the time, when you're recording an album, actually, most of the time goes into tuning. Especially, you know, G string, you know that? So, I, I did all No Halos in Hell guitar tracks, like seven, 15, 16 songs in two days. And I tuned the guitar twice. Once when I changed the strings on the first day, and second time when I changed the strings on the second day. <laughs> so it makes everything so smooth, you don't have to worry about, you know. And yeah, the feel isn't, it's a little bit different, but at least I, I get used to, uh, you know, really fast. And I did, you know, the rhythms, the leads, I, I, um, I used the normal guitar. But I have set it this up like... So I can bend with this. You can obviously set it that no matter what you do, it, you can't bend, it stays in tune. But I like to... That feels really strange. So, this is basically my, my studio guitar, especially with Syra, because there's keyboards, a lot of stuff, so a lot of layers of guitars, so I want... It's just easier to... Uh, what do I think about LTD guitars? Well, I have only one, but I've, I've done videos of many. I think these are fantastic. And I actually just uh, got a confirmation that I'm, I'm gonna get a new Phoenix bass from ESP in a few months. The, the black one with EMGs. And, I mean, I'm not sure how, is it like thousand euros or something? Made in Korea, but these are really good. I mean, wow. What's the story with my talk guys? Well, I used to have these before uh, ESPs or anything. Musa Maailma, the Finnish fantastic a guitar and bass and instrument, you know, store in Finland. They uh, they re represent Tokai. They've been representing Tokai, distributing it to Finland like, well, as long as I have played. So, yeah, Tokai's. I had one. I have one Gibson, which isn't here, but I prefer these more. These are old ones, twenty years something old. I love these guitars. What else? Yeah, do I use any magic tricks because my guitar sound is good? No, I don't. It's all here. So, on my videos, 
if there's an, something done in the post, like delay or reverb or whatever, I tell that and I show that. Most of the time, there's nothing. No EQ, no compressor, no, no magic box. It's just the guitar and usually super overdrive, uh, noise gate and the amp. And the reactive load box and usually Jens Bulger and Sound of God EQ2. That's my favorite impulse response. It's made of my one of my favorite cabinets and speakers and microphone combinations. So the magic happens here. And sometimes I'm like you know 800 doesn't sound like that. You know some like someone commented like when I'm playing at my rehearsal place it sounds different. If I play here with the cabinet it sounds a certain way but if I want you to hear it I need to put a microphone in front of it and then that's obviously changes the sound completely because microphone doesn't hear the sound like our ears. So whenever you listen to any YouTube video, any album, whatever, you're not hearing the amp and the cabinet. You're hearing the amp, the cabinet, the microphone, the preamp. So, if you want to hear how these sounds here, you would have to be here with me. But they sound pretty much the same, because I monitor myself with these Genelec monitors, which is a really neutral, really awesome So I always dial my sound listening to those. That's what you do in the studio. When you are in the studio, you don't dial your sound like this. You put microphones in it, then you go to the control room, you play, and then you tweak the sound, because the microphones are hearing the sound differently than your ears. That was a tip. Uh, well, I guess that's for now. At least, I think so. If you have any more questions, you know, put them in the description below. And I, I'll, uh, I guess I'll be doing this a little bit more. Yes. Luckily, my subscriber count has been growing, so it takes a lot of time to you know, answer everyone individually. And, yeah, thanks again for, for the support. I try to keep my pace up like a couple of videos a week. Right now I'm in a mood of, you know, we're writing new Cyro material with Jake, so I have no idea what I'm gonna do next, my next video, but I have a long list of requests from you, my to-do list, so I'll probably pick something from there and we'll do it. Probably by the end of this week. All right, hey, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. All the best. Take care. Bye.